but he worked with Vern Cameron to go in when Lake Elsinore was dried up in the 60s, located water below aquifers. Get that, below aquifers. Had to instruct the drillers a totally different way to drill. A, they weren't used to looking for water below aquifers, so there was a shutdown in the mindset. B, they didn't know how to drill below the aquifers at that point. And he was the one who brought up all that water in Lake Elsinore. And to this day, most of the people think that water in Lake Elsinore is just regular rainwater rather than coming up through super cold steam. So exploration and discovery is so exciting. And when you have the opportunity to work with people who are open to new knowledge and who are receptive to new ways of getting things done and exploring and discovering, things can happen very quickly. So I wanted to tell you about that just as part of whatever it is that you're doing, that the lag time between the investment in a mine and actually locating something can be totally minimized, totally minimized. Something for you to ponder. And if you're interested, you can listen to the show with Paul Smith. He was part of the psychic espionage program called Project Stargate. And I think it would be interesting food for thought as a method that could be used for good instead of spending hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars on mines with this thing of waiting 10 years, which is a deterrent for investors. And most people want to invest short-term, unfortunately. They don't understand long-term investing, and they're not on board with long-term investing. But I think you're more rare in that way than most people walking the earth. We're in the now Pop-Tart society mindset. So I just wanted to share that with you as as a thought. All right, that most very few people are open to new methods or new thoughts of anything in the world. You must know that famous, what is it, that a, this first one, when a new idea comes along, everybody ridicules it, laughs. At first they ignore you, then they laugh at you and ridicule you, then they, uh, they accept it, and then they try to take credit for it. Exactly. So it's Ex- been proven. I will say... If Mr. Smith, I, I, I don't dispute I'm just suggesting that if Mr. Smith is right, why doesn't he find some oil for us? The proof is in the pudding. Water story is great. They went and proved what they were talking about. And nobody doubts them anymore. Prove it. Something is going to end this bull market in commodities. All bull markets have come to an end. For instance, stocks or commodities or anything else, this one will too. And maybe Mr. Smith has the answer. But instead of talking on the radio, we ought to be out there finding some oil. If, if it's legitimate. Actually, I'm not trying to sell Mr. Smith, nor did I interview him for that reason. But I've been interested in that program because of the knowledge that there are things that can be located without years and years of traditional methodology. That's all I'm saying. But he is already every day proving what he does. You should probably at your leisure listen to that interview and see what you think. And if you are interested, you should call him and let him do something for you to find whatever you're looking for. All I can tell you is the speed at which things can get done now is amazing. And just because a lot of these methods are not known to most of the public, it's because most of the public has shut down to 99% of new knowledge. And it's unfortunate, but it's the fact. It's a fortune to be made finding oil. If he doesn't know that, I don't, why do I waste my time? If Mr. Smith doesn't know that there's a gigantic fortune to be made finding a gold mine, please. I would like to talk about a bull in China, since you are a bull in China. <laughs> And it's so exciting how you've described the opportunity in China. I had no idea that the transportation is transforming there. Agriculture is transforming there. Jobs are transforming there. You describe five different industries, at least, of this boom that's happening in China. Why do you suppose it is that Americans, I can't speak for the rest of the world, but Americans are still lagging and dragging and weary. Is it because they feel the Chinese are so different or we feel the Chinese are so different or what myths we've been told? Well, it's back to what we were talking about before. You know, 300 years, then they had this disaster with Mao Zedong, this period of communism which, of course, there was the Cold War, and we were all 
spreading horrible propaganda about each other. They were telling people terrible things about us and we about them. Uh, and so people came to believe that China was a disaster, et cetera, and it was. It was a disaster, but 30 years ago, that changed, and they started unleashing entrepreneurship and capitalism again, and that has led to one of the most astonishing booms in the history of mankind. They, they still call themselves communists, but they're among the best capitalists in the world right now. I know people tell you that they're the best capitalists in the world. You know, Massachusetts is more communist than, than China is these days. <laughs> California is more communist than, than, than China. But most people just think it's like what the story with commodities before. A major change has taken place. Most people are not aware of it. You're bowled over. Anybody who goes are there sees what has happened, especially somebody who was there 30 years ago and then comes today and sees, oh, my goodness, it's not the same anything. The Chinese have had recurring periods of greatness in their history over the past several thousand years. They've also had recurring periods of disaster for about 300 years, up until 1979. Well, that's all changed now, and people should understand that. You talked about agriculture transforming there, medical insurance is becoming available in China, travel is booming transportation with new mag trains and planes, new airplanes and airlines, even a green organic theme is going on as well. I wouldn't have thought that at all. I would suggest that people look out their window. First, they look around their house, look around their office, and look out their window, and everything that's happened to America in the past hundred years is now happening in China. Although in some cases, they're ahead of us. Because, you know, we have we're bogged down by a little bit by our history. I mean, we have landlines for telephones, Chinese hand phones everywhere, because they have leapfrogged, you know, over that whole generation where we all put in telephone lines. They've skipped that. They don't need them. Um, we don't need it for that matter. But we, in our history, because of history, we have a lot of phone lines still. But all you got to do is look around, see what. In your world, the same thing is happening in China, only very, very quickly, because they're playing, trying to catch up. They're building roads. They have the best highways in the world right now. Only they learned the Americans and the Europeans and the Japanese how to build roads, and now they're doing it at a very rapid rate. I mean, whatever you see, they have to do because they want to live like we do. You know, I opened a new Apple keyboard today. And I looked at the back of it, and it said, Made in China. Everything we see, I mean, there's so many things that are seemingly, you look at products that are all made in China. It's hard to ignore. What, what is it? Well, we, you're, you're exactly right. It, the world is changing. I don't, don't get me wrong, and I explain in the book, and there will be plenty of problems in China. We in America had plenty of problems as we rose to power and, and glory. They will, too. But right now, they are in a, a boom phase, a growing phase, and they can produce things cheaper than we can in many, in many areas. And also, I mean, China produces something like several hundred thousand engineers every year. Not every decade, every year. We produce hardly any engineers in America, as you know. The education, the the ambition, the opportunities are much different in China, and therefore they are growing. I mean, 100 years ago, we were the new kid on the block, and we boomed and had a spectacular, spectacular period. The British had a great period in the 19th century. This has happened throughout history. The Spanish did in the 16th century. So nothing unusual about it. It happens to be in this particular era, China, that is the the new kid on the block. Is your daughter named Happy? Yes, one of my daughters is named Happy. You're right. What's your other daughter's name? Well, her name is Bilan, which is my middle name, a family name, but we call her Baby B. She is known as Baby <laughs> B. Baby B? Darling. Baby B, yes. Oh, what? It's quite a, 
Looks like she is a, she works like a bee. No question about that. I noticed.